The chemical energy produced from the food we eat is stored as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, in our cells. The process of transferring the energy stored in the chemical bonds of food into the chemical energy stored in the bonds of ATP is called cellular respiration, or cellular metabolism. ATP is the ultimate energy goal of aerobic and anaerobic metabolism and is the only type of fuel our cells can use to contract muscle, digest food, grow and repair tissues, and keep the brain alive. ATP can be made from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, but they are not used equally by the body. Let's look more closely at how our cells make ATP from the food we eat. The most important forms of the three macronutrients our bodies can use to make ATP are glucose from carbohydrates, fatty acids from fats, and amino acids from proteins. Carbohydrates are broken down to ATP in the cytoplasm of the cell through a process called glycolysis while fats undergo beta-oxidation and proteins undergo oxidative deamination or transamination. While a small amount of ATP is formed during glycolysis of carbohydrates, the major purpose of glycolysis, beta-oxidation, and oxidative deamination or transamination are to serve as preparatory steps for the formation of acetyl-coenzyme A. Acetyl-CoA is the universal intermediate in the metabolism of carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Once acetyl-CoA is available, it enters the mitochondria of the cell and the metabolic pathway can continue. What happens next is the same no matter which type of macronutrient we began with. The amount of ATP produced from acetyl-CoA is much greater than produced only from glycolysis, largely because this is an oxygen-dependent process while glycolysis is not. Each of the stages in the formation of ATP, including glycolysis, formation of acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle, electron transport system, and oxidative phosphorylation consists of a series of steps. Each step produces a small chemical change to a macronutrient. These sequences of steps are important because they allow energy from food to be released gradually. If all of our food energy was released at the same time, most would be released as heat, which would destroy our tissues.